This is our third part of our video on using Excel to create a Monte Carlo simulation of wealth accumulation. In the first video, we kind of introduced what we were going to be doing, what the objectives were, and got started on the setup. In the second video, we converted to our monthly average return, a monthly standard deviation, as well as generated our random returns using a log normal distribution. And now in this last video, we're going to go ahead and move to the last step, which is converting to the dollar values. Now, the first thing I want to do is set up my months. Remember, I want 360 months for 30 years, so I smart drag that down. Oops, went too far. I can just cut off those last two rows and trials I need 100 trials so smart drag remember move the cursor to bottom right hand corner left click hold and drag across and it'll smart count out till 100 trials stop there now also I want to freeze the rows above and the rows to the left of cell B14 that will allow me to have some headings up here so I'm going to view freeze panes and now I'm ready to start entering my formula for wealth. What I want is my initial investment which is up here in B1 so equals B1 times 1 plus my random return for the first month trial 1 that's over here my random returns trial 1 month 1 and that's what I have at the end of the month before my monthly contribution. Remember, my monthly contribution comes at the end of each month. So once I've generated my return on my first initial investment, I want to add in B2, which is my $600 at the end of the month. Now I've got my formula set up. Can drag that down. Oops, this isn't working here. Something's going wrong. Why'd all my money disappear? The answer, remember from our last video where we introduced relative versus absolute cell references, here we need to use a mix of absolute and relative cell references. Our B1, our initial investment, needs to be an absolute cell reference. Our monthly contribution, B2, needs to be an absolute cell reference. Our random return should be relative because we always want that to update to the correct trial and the correct month that we're in. So go ahead and anchor that B1 dollar sign in front of the B, dollar sign in front of the 1. Anchor our B2 over here for our monthly contribution. Leave the random returns B2 cell, relative cell reference, and now we're set. Another problem we're going to have though is now it's going to always restart at 5,000. See if I drag this down. I never really accumulate much wealth. I'm still in the 5,000 category almost two, on, two years later, even though I've been adding 600 a month. The reason is I'm forcing myself to restart at 5,000. That was what I wanted for the first month, but in the second month, I don't want 5,000. I want to start up here, whatever was in B14. I want that 5,441. So I've got to go to the second month return, cell B15, and change that to B2, or not B2, but B14. Now that says always go up one. I want it to be a relative cell reference because when I get down to month six, I want the fifth month value. So I always want a relative cell reference here now. Drag that down all the way. And at the end of trial one or scenario one, I have a little over two million. Now I want to drag that over. I want to get the entire set of values, including month one. So I've got to go back up, highlight all of trial one. And now I want to see, okay, that's one random scenario. What about the other 99? Let's drag it over. So I drag that over through 
by 100 trials or random scenarios and now you can see they're all pasted out. Now notice here I've got a series of hash marks all that's telling me is the value is too big to fit in that column so I want to change that I want to go up here to home now over here to format my cells and what I want to do is set my column width I want to set it big enough so they're always there Let's go ahead and start with 12. 12 is not enough. That's actually smaller than it was. So let me make it a little bit bigger. Let's go ahead and try 16. Okay, everything's fitting now. You can see all these values are always fitting. I can always see what I have. So that's big enough. Now, if you remember, I had over $2 million in trial one the first time. Now it's down to under a million. Did something get screwed up? No, remember my random returns change every time I do something. So these numbers are constantly generating new random returns and that's changing the values. Don't worry about that. We can set those and lock them if, later if we want. Usually we won't want to, but if we do want to, we can. Now to make this a little easier, I want everything up here in the heading so I can always see it. Remember that freeze panes means this is always going to be visible. So let me just put up a column or, or a row with the ending wealth equals B373 drag that across and now I have all my ending wells. I may also want to look at what my maximum, minimum, average or median are so I can set those up. Let me go ahead with the maximum equals max for maximum That's going to be that entire ending wealth row equals min for minimum. Again, the entire ending wealth row. Average. This is average is the mean of the distribution. But because these wealth distributions are skewed, I might also want the median. Median is going to tell me half the time I did better than this value, half the time I did worse. So median, drag that across. Now in this scenario, or this spreadsheet we've got here, the mean should always be higher than the median because these big numbers on the maximum are going to artificially inflate our average so that's why we want to take a look at the median as well now once this is set up I can change anything I want if I want to look at well maybe I'm not going to save this much let me save three hundred dollars a month change that cell everything updates what if I'm more conservative I'm only going to invest primarily in bonds with a few stocks maybe that's going to lower my average return to six percent it's also going to lower my risk, maybe 10%. Update everything there. Now if I want to, because remember my random numbers get regenerated, all I have to do to regenerate those random numbers is press F9. So I can generate another 100 scenarios if I want by pressing F9. Bang, there's 100 new scenarios. There's 100 new scenarios. So each time I press F9, I can generate new scenarios. Now maybe though I want to set this up as a report. So I say, okay, here's my trials. Now I want to lock these values down, these random numbers, so they're not going to change. All I have to do is go over here to the random returns, highlight all 360 months, 100 trials, copy, paste. Now notice when I hit paste, I didn't click on the clipboard. I went down below here to where that had the little down arrow that brings up a number of options I want to paste special and I want to paste my values and number formats that's going to get rid of the formula and just put the values down but it's going to keep my percentages so they still look good now notice when I click on this cell it's no longer a formula it's just a number it's not going to change when I go back here to sheet one if I press F9 nothing changes if I change my monthly contribution, now we are going to get some changes here because this doesn't involve my random returns. It's just changing how much I'm 
putting in at the end of each month. But now let's see what happens when I change my average return. Go back to 9%. Notice it doesn't change any of my values because it's no longer generating new random returns. So once you lock down those random returns, then you can no longer adjust your average return or your anticipated standard deviation. Just a quick recap. The objectives of this video were to introduce log normal random returns, why we use them and how to set them up at Excel. We did that. We talked about the importance of absolute versus relative cell reference and showed you how to set them up. Introduced why we would want to use the freeze panes option and how to do that and illustrated how big of a role randomness can have on our wealth accumulation. Again, all of these had the same basic random returns, but you can see very big differences in wealth accumulations depending on which scenario we had. Under this last one we did, we had a maximum wealth of 1.8 million, minimum wealth of 257,000. So you can see very big potential differences on your saving plans. How much do I need to save per month to meet my retirement goals? The answer is it depends. Depends on how your returns work out. You need to be flexible. You need to be able to adjust those up or down over time. Adjust your savings plans up or down over time or recognize you might not reach your original goals depending on what random returns you run into. Hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you.